we will um, hurry on with Diebeke Kovic, who is uh, coming from NCC, the contractor, the Danish, con Danish Swedish contractor um, NCC. And um, Diebeke is, um, I, I maybe say something wrong, but at least you are an architect working in a contracting firm, which is fairly rare, I think. Yes. Um, and you're also <laughs> head of sustainability. Yes. Um, so we've asked you to talk about, as the others for this session, the digital versus the physical, and we are curious to hear about how you approach that in from your perspective. Yeah. Please welcome Diebeke. Thank you. And thank you very much for the invitation. I found it very exciting, and I guess I hit the, the yes note, the, the yes uh, point in my computer right away when Anna asked me to, to join this uh, company today. I'm going to approach this in a little bit of a different way. Uh, but I think that one of the, my points will be that I will come back to issues that are handled both by SD and by Peel early on today. And uh, the thing is that uh, when you are an architect in a contractor's firm like I am, you definitely feel the, the seriousness about the process very closely on your body, if you could say so. I have myself, I've been working in architecture firms, I've working in, been working in engineering firms, I have been working with clients, and now I'm in a contractor's firm. So I have have had the entire chain very close to my body for, for a period of years. Recently, there was this, this, uh, this, uh, this remark in one of the, our Danish magazines, and I actually saw that the writer, the, the man, man who wrote it, is on the back row in, in this uh, auditorium. There is a trend about architecture saying that it's losing integrity and becoming something that you can call added value, some kind of hocus pocus, as a layer upon a construction. And uh, my colleagues in NCC are definitely some of the people that you have to convince that architecture is much more than that. So that I felt it like a very inspiring uh, sentence that I could work with also in order to have an impact on the mindset of my colleagues in, in NCC. It was reason, it was pointed out, as I said there, in a major Danish architect in magazine. And the thing is that this is not necessarily a new trend, but it's a kind of a different name. It's still sad, though, because there's still something that we need to struggle with. And Martin Keiting continues in something that I have tried to uh, translate also, that he says, considering architecture as such is a downward path because architecture is a combination of construction, economy, form, theory, place, space, light, a tight of art, and that's still the case. And that's also what we are struggling with, the few of us who are architects in NCC. But it's also the inciting part because there is definitely room for improvement and there is something to work with. NCC is changing a lot for the moment. We are building ourselves up to handle buildings and building industry in a totally different way from what we have been working with so far. We are moving, we are uh, in a paradigm change, you could say so, we are in a paradigm shift. We are moving away from looking at buildings as some, something isolated islands which have no impact on the society and which has no uh, and which are seen as isolated figures. We are moving across up through this, this figure here, and we are exactly in that paradigm shift where we are going to, from having seen buildings as uh, part of problems to see them as part of solutions. And this calls for change in an organization like NCC. And there is a mantra which has resulted in a, in a, in a very big organizational change uh, in 2016. As you may know, we are a Nordic concern, we are a Nordic uh, company. We have uh, Denmark, we have Norway, we have Finland, and we have Sweden. And as you may also see here that Sweden is the big sister, the mother, if you could say so. Uh, Sweden takes up like 55% of the entire uh, production activities in NCC, and Norway, Denmark, and Finland is about 45 altogether. 
And that means that we are about 2,700 people in Denmark working with buildings as such. We used to be, before 2016, we used to be an organization that was organized in columns related to the different country areas. But we realized, or somebody at least realized, that we had to take care of the thing that large complex projects are the future. And to, in order to overcome that, somebody in NCC realized that that had to have an impact upon how we organized ourselves, our domain, our business area. And again, that has also had to have a dip, an, an impact upon how we work with things how we work with buildings, and digitalization, Internet of Things, VDC, BIM, as such, are tools in that relation. That, again, calls for a diversity of people working in NCC. We need to be other people than what we used to be. We need to be the same people as we have. We need to have these old men, as Pete was also talking about, that know everybody, everything about building, but we also need, need to have young people and we need to have diversified people that are able to catch all the trends and all the, the working methodologies that uh, makes thing, things come alive. And that again also plays back into the thing that large complex projects requires more people than what we used to be. So growth is a very important issue in the transformation process that NCC is into right now. And that all these issues again have an impact upon our identity, our culture, and on our mindset around sustainability, for instance. We expect and we hear and we feel that sustainability is, is important questions and important requirements that our clients will ask for in the future. Some of them do it already, some of them don't know how to ask for it, but we will want to be prepared for this. And the reason why I mention this is that sustainability is actually a quite an important driver. Also, in order to be more conscious in an organization like ours for how architects work. And that again means, means that we have, uh, we have had this major change that has actually resulted in an organization which is more horizontally organized now. We have uh, for a, a, a business area called building, one called infrastructure, one called industry, and one called property development. Architects will most likely be interested in building and property development because that's, that's where the building activities are fed and that's where they are uh, being carried out. Recently there was this, and unfortunately it is in Den Danish, but I would like to point out that our CEO says that uh, the reason for this change is that we uh, have an ambition about being a consulting contractor. And that means that we want to enhance the way we work. We don't only want to be somebody who assembles buildings. We want to be something that actually have some kind of control of the processes. And that requires a lot from an organization like NCC. We see a tendency that the market is moving towards bigger and much larger projects, and this means more complexity, and it means that we have uh, more things that we need to be aware of how to handle, for instance, in regards to installations and sustainability as such. And that again calls for uh, specialized competences, and that again calls for uh, new ways of being able to meet the requirements from the customers. Again, another issue in this discussion is that uh, when you look upon the traditional contractor, we usually tend to be working only in how we uh, con build up, a, a, how we, we develop a project and how we make the contract and how we make the preliminary the detail design and how we build it. And then the traditional, you could say, idea about a contractor is that then they run away. The thing is that what we're working right with right now is that we want to point at the fact that how you actually run a building and how you actually behave in order to demolish this and recycle and work with circular economy 
that is where the money is, if you could say so. That is also where we can actually talk for an argument for that we have more money in the in in the early phases to establish the most proper concepts and by then also establish the most uh, carried through architectural uh, projects as such. When I try to explain this in my organization, my idea about this is that we can take some of the money that we would actually save in the facility management and put it into the design of the building. That's not necessarily how my colleagues look, looks at it yet, but we're really, I'm really working on it. <laughs> promise, and I promise you, I will get away with it for a period of time. <laughs> <laughs> but there is another point to this which is really important to write uh, to, to point out and that is the fact that, that uh, when you have this process through a building project then it is in the beginning in the early phases which uh, architects such as uh, Mikkelsen and Don't Go and Trantman would probably also uh, agree with me, it is in the beginning and the uh, intermediate in the, in the early phases that all the important solutions are made. And that's also where we make solutions uh, or where we make decisions that will allow Mikkelsen architects to come up with such a beautiful construction as the velodrome that we, we, he just presented for us. Because there are all the arguments that if you can use sustainability as driver in the early phases, then there is a lot of arguments that can actually carry through such things. And one of the difficult tasks that I'm working with together with our VDC apartment, and there now comes the digitalization into play. Because for the moment we are working with dry diagrams such as these. They are a little bit different from what Peel showed. She showed the Excel sheets. And this is hopefully, you could say, a move from the Excel sheets into a further, a higher, you could say, consciousness about the fact that different actors need to work together in the, all the phases. This is an image of the tender phase. And if you, it's not very clear, but all these swim lanes here describe each their, you could say, uh, interested party in a design process. And one of them is the architect. And the thing is about sustainability that I have actually managed to work it into this swim lane idea that there will are sustainability drivers that could help the architect to get in play in earlier phases. And that is very necessary for a contractor's firm to be able to work together with the architects. Maybe we don't need so much the engineers any longer because NCC can have their own engineers but we still need to be in contact and in touch and in dialogue with the architects and we need to be much closer in contact and dialogue with the architects. And that again, talking about digitalization, that has an impact upon how we exchange our files and how we exchange the knowledge and the data so that we can build up the models that would actually allow these projects to have a proper amount of architectural detailing all, all through the process. So I think it's very important to point at the fact that contractors, such as my own company, are, they're not yet obsessed, but they will be. <laughs> they will be obsessed by the idea that we need to have a much closer collaboration with the architects in the early phases. And that again also puts up some requirements to the architects. Because contractors are basically, and you all know them for that, you know them for the fact that money is the driving force so forth. So you and me and everybody who's an architect need to be able to argument, as Peel was also pointing out, also on the base of, of uh, money. We have a uh, pilot project in uh, NCC that we work a lot with. Uh, this is the Dome of Vision. Some of know, you may know it. Uh, it has been the, built in at version 1 and 2. The version one has been moved around. It has been it has been in Aarhus and in Copenhagen and in Aarhus and in Copenhagen, and now uh, then the Swedes found out that they would also have a dome of vision, so they built one in in Stockholm, in uh, in uh, Karolinska, uh, close to Karolinska up there, 
And then this one is the newest edition, which is the third one, uh, version three, which is built in Aarhus. This has, you can, you can think about the Dome of Vision what you want to, and I think that it has, it has been causing a lot of architectural discussion. But there is one thing that is going on here, and that is that it's actually getting more and more beautiful from the version two, from the version one, through the version two, through the, to the version three. And that also is like a tool for us to be able to communicate very closely with an architect. And Christopher, who is the architect of the Dome of Vision, he is in a way both very outward going and very, uh, you could say, visionary, but he's also like a very old fashioned architect. He is really into how you deal with these details, and he is angry, very angry when, the, when, 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 when the, our engineers and our VDC people does not understand him. So there is something, there is really something about dialogue and communication here, which we have to be very much aware of how we handle in the future processes. And we use uh, the Dome of Vision version 3 has been uh, dragged all the way through uh, VDC and uh, we have actually uh, have the so-called built before build models, which is also something that we want to work with in regards to some pilot projects where we, where we intend to take the entire process and integrate V2C into the entire process from the very, very beginning, even before the investment has been made, simply to allow the, the collaboration between the different parts to take place and be aware of what we need to write into our own management system and how we need to work together with architects. So the architect's role on this is something that is really interesting uh, since contractors from such as NCC will want to work very closely together with architects even more closely than ever before. And our expectations therefore are that we you keep on, we keep on being holistic, creative and iterative in, in our design thinking in the early phases. Also, the expectations are that architects are aware that multidisciplinary capabilities and internal collaboration, collaboration between the architecture office or within the architecture offices are really, really necessary. And, not least, ability to value alternatives in regards to argumentation that can challenge money. That was also a little bit of what Peel was pointing at, and I really agree with her. This idea about being able to argument for your solutions, you can come very far with that. Also in order to talk contractors into actually solving these ideas, such as in a matter so that they still create uh, architectural value and architectural detail. And then uh, one example that I'm really uh, interested in and, and follow a lot uh, is uh, how, for instance, Henning Larsen Architects is uh, in integrating engineers into their practice. Because this platform where you work engineers and architects together in the early phases and up through the project is really also something that is necessary that we work with in our processes as such. So the ability to live up to collabor collaborators' expectations in regard to technical knowledge is also something that will be requested or required from the contractors' firms. Not to forget financial knowledge. Having the ability to come and describe what are the alternatives here. Why, how does this create value? What is the meaning? What is the intention behind this? What does it create that will give the customer more value for money in this case? So, either architects need to be Renaissance people who can handle all the facets as another Leonardo da Vinci, or the parties need to develop themselves, and that goes for both contractors and architects, into becoming solution providers in dialogue. So, so one of the things that I noted that Pete was saying is that they might every now and then be considered as arrogant. And that is, that is not necessarily things that makes uh, solutions happen very easily. 
there is really something about how we talk to each other and what we expect to each other that are very, very interesting in order to make the, the digital processes work. Because working with things that has to be built before built requires that we have to also try off many different solutions in the early phases to make it happen. So in the understanding of yourself as architects, you need to be brought and build up your argumentation with the help of other professionals. I want to uh, contribute with a small example here, because uh, one of the things that we have had going on for three years now in NCC is something that we call the Winter Academy. And the Winter Academy is like a uh, multi-professional uh, multi uh, initiative that we have had been going on together with Concitu and with uh, people doing uh, restorations and uh, so forth. And the idea is that we would want to be able, we would want to contribute to building up these necessary platforms for all this interchange of knowledge that is necessary to make the VDC and the BIM processes and, the in, and all the digitalization processes work. And for that we may need to be able to collect the knowledge of different professionals. And this little uh, quadrant, this little uh, square, was uh, a tool which our students worked with in the recent uh, Winter Academy, and where we actually had people from CBS, from architecture school, from landscape school, from engineering school, from contractors firms, from all over the the, brand, the building industry, if you could say so, and the, and and the, we use this way of th thinking, uh, different professionals and their abilities as a very, you could say, fruitful tool for how to actually get the best out of everybody. And and I think that the and I believe that what we are dealing with in order to make digitalization uh, succeed is that we are very, very aware of all the different professionalities and what they can contribute with in the way we plan projects. So it's a little bit of a different approach to digitalization that I've come up with here. But it's also because I, as an architect, is very interested in processes and how you deal with processes in the contracted firms and in the building chain. So some of the tools that I have noted and that are also uh, on the table over there are, are, are strong tools in this. Because I think that they demonstrate, you could say, the, the, the platform for where we need to have the dialogues going on to make this happen. And I'm very pleased and I enjoy uh, many of the materials coming from the two architecture schools myself and I also want to distribute them as much as possible between my colleagues in NCC. So I would end up my, my lecture here by uh, trying to say that some of the things that I think is necessary to answer some of the questions that was uh, raised in the materials that was, uh, that was uh, sent out in this uh, symposium. The role and importance of detailing in the today's building practice is about using the tools and processes to be able to create beauty in assembly and quality in assembly, design for disassembly, had also been mentioned quite a few times today, and resilience. Uh, we have uh, some very disturbing things uh, connected to uh, the change of the, the climate at the moment, which also requires that we need to take care of this. And in the processes of digitalization, it's really crucial that the necessary uh, simulation and uh, evaluation can be made all through the project and also argument for the money used on actually creating good and resilient buildings. And then control of joints between materials, materi uh, materials elements, components of volumes still calls for which is both, uh, which all the architects today, uh, both, both Van Kunsten, Mikkelsen and, and uh, Lundgaard Tranbe and also uh, your project has demonstrated that there is this really, you need to be very focused upon how you make these joints. It's not so that you just push a button and then it comes out in a 3D print. That re that it really needs this attention on how all these are collaborated and, and excuse me, uh, how these are assembled. Because as long as we have different climates, we also have different circumstances. 
and that may call for many different solutions linked to specific projects. It also goes for different geographies, and it goes for the different cultures. There are still important issues that are not calling for solutions that can just be pushed out through a button or everywhere around the world. Is this a situation that uh, is this a situation now that everything is digitally, globally available and delivered at no time? I don't think so. I think that today is the mantra is that what is built and how it's built is specified by the con by today. It is so that what is built and how it's built is specified by the customer. And conventionally, building the building industry is reactive to this mantra. This will not be the case in the future. Twenty. 10, 20, 30 years from now, the customers will require much more from us, which is also an argument for us being much more people and much more competences in regards to how to actually make this happen. It is also a matter of coordination, and that may be one of the big tasks in the future in, in regards to digitalization. And we are all in this transition and the responsibility for developing the good solutions is everybody's. And by that I actually take a lot of responsibility on me as a contractor, because we have to also transform ourselves into somebody that is really more, much more able to talk and develop the good architectural and detailed solutions together with the architects. Are we facing a digitally driven redevelopment of craftsmanship? that will reinvent custom make architectural detail and who defines the properties and longevity of good solutions. We are facing it. Change collaborators on lifetime quality, holistic approach. Challenge, excuse me, the collaborators, all the people in the process on quality and holistic approach and aesthetics. And know what you're talking about. Again, know about the money, know about the culture, the climate, the geography, know about everything that is important. So you architect, you should definitely not let the contract that run you over. You need to be able to contribute to the control, to take the control and to develop the projects. Challenge the contractor in our own half of the field of the play. And that should be in terms of material qualities, technical as well as cultural understanding of the purpose and the meaning, and sustainability. Because sustainability is a very strong driver and we should use it as such. Not be afraid of this hopeless word sustainability, but actually use it as a driver and prove. For that purpose, I would say thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Now, I think you uh, definitely set the scene for our next speaker because um, I know that Odilo will talk about how what you just presented, how it actually also happens in, um, in the BIM models and what is required from the architect. So I'm very curious to see how this add-ons to what you just said. Um, so do so I. Thank you. <laughs>